both remaining players check behind, and I happen to be in the one universe where two red aces hold up here. Looking back on this session, it's crystal clear that some hands I was forcing, just trying to push them through because I thought the opponents would fold. However, sometimes the reasons I was using to make these decisions were basically because I think they'll fold. That's not a real reason. Sometimes you just need to give up on a hand. It's fine. Move on to the next one. This next hand is just a mess. Under the Gun 2 opens to $30, the Button, who not only has been a pretty high V-Pit player, but also likes to see showdowns, calls. The small blind comes along, and getting 156 to 1 on my money, I make the call with 8-4 suited. Honestly, I would have called with 8-4 suited had it only been the opener and I, but I digress. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? But I digress? Who says that? Who are you, Shakespeare? Just talk normal. Damn. Four ways to the flop. King, three, deuce with two spades. Nothing happens on this flop. No opener seabed even. Nothing. It checks through. The turn jack of diamonds is, well, this is where the train wreck begins. The small blind checks and me, sensing weakness for some reason where really there was none to be found, decides, I'm going to win this pot. I bet $60 directly into the opener in the aforementioned never folding button. <laughs> aforementioned? The under the gun opener folds, the button does not, and the small blind lets it go as well. Heads up, we see a nine of diamonds appear on the river. Okay, Jamin, so let me get this straight. We block nothing. We never had a draw of any kind. Even if we had made a pair, it might not have even been good, and so now we wind up on the river with eight high. Um, yeah, we made a wrong turn someplace. So what now? Well, if we give up and check, we obviously lose, so let's bet. Okay, what size? Well, we want him to fold. Um, what do we want him to fold? He opens and he calls everything. We settle on $120, which, even on a good day, is much too small. He doesn't think about this one very long, calls, and we instamuck before he can even show us Jack-10 offsuit. The next hand, we fold our small blind. We do open the action on our button with 8-7 offsuit, flop top pair versus the big blind defender, and win a small one there, so that's good. In the cutoff, we are dealt pocket jacks. The low jack in this hand is the high V-pipping, never folding player that snapped us off a few hands back. He's open to $40. We three bet to $120, action folds back to him, and he calls because of course he does. Together, we see a flop of eight, nine deuce rainbow, and he checks. I do make a slight sizing mistake here by betting only $90, when I probably should have bet something in the $160 range. Either way, he snap calls my flop bet. The turn seven of diamonds, I'm not so much a fan of. When he checks, I decide to check it back. The plan is to either let him stab river and call, or if the river is clean and he checks, I'm betting it myself we see the deuce of hearts on the river. Well, we do now counterfeit his two pair type hands, but that card also brings in the front door flush. Action is on our new friend, and he thinks about it for a while, then slides out a bet of $220. <sighs> this isn't good. 
My hand is now basically a bluff catcher versus a guy that knows how to bluff, but most likely isn't betting a 9 like this. The problem is, there aren't that many bluffs. Miss diamonds and that's about it. Everything else got there. I close my eyes, I call again, and lose. This time, to 6-5 offsuit. The next hand, we fold. Following that, under the gun two limps, and we make it $40 from the low jack with 7-6 suited. The only action we get here is the under the gun player. The flop of 4-3 deuce rainbow gets pretty quickly checked through. The turn queen of spades, however, does not. The under the gun player now leads for $30. Me? I'm in no mood to fold to anyone this orbit. I'm going to call him here with my gut shot, and if he checks the river, well, he's probably just going to have to call me. The river jack of diamonds falls, and the under the gun two player does check. Here I am again on the river with absolutely nothing. At least this time, I'm in position. I bet $70 with my 7 high, and he folds pretty quickly. This whole orbit was unfortunate. The session progressed as normal again for a while. No big pots won, nor lost. The table did agree to put on a $20 straddle, and that is in effect during this next hand. I'm the straddle here, and the player first to act limps. The hijack limps, the big blind limps, and I look down at two black queens. Oh, we're definitely raising this. I make it $100 to go. The original limper now calls, and while action is on the hijack, the big blind folds out of turn. This out of turn folding was an epidemic this session. The hijack finds the fold, and although we took a circuitous route, we wind up heads up on the flop. Circu. Circu. What? Deuce 4 6 with two spades. We lead for $70, and the under the gun player goes into the tank for 15 seconds before deciding to raise to $270. Excuse me? What, what is this? No one who limps with aces or kings doesn't re-raise pre-flop. This sizing is either a flop set that's scared of a flush draw, or it's a draw itself. I'm banking on the latter. I call. The turn three of diamonds isn't exactly a blank, as it does fill in ace-five suited combinations. After being raised on the flop, however, I check. And now the under the gun player just moves in for $710. I really don't take too long with this one. I'm near the top of my range and his line feels insanely draw heavy, especially this shove. I call. He puts up one finger to tell the dealer he only wants to run it once. Once is fine. The deuce pairs on the river and he says, I have a six. I got a six. As he exposes seven six of spades, I table RuPaul and Little Richard and drag my largest pot of the night. You guys are being um, blessed with the double mid session update today. The double. Although this one won't be a full mid-session update situation. We're just out here to eat some pad thai. So like I thought, the table dynamics have changed because they always change. And initially, they changed negatively for me. My pocket jacks fell victim to the 6-5 uh, offsuit for three or $400. But then I turned it right around and uh, won a sizable pot with pocket queens versus 6-7 suited that a guy decided to uh, wager all his chips on a flush draw and missed. So we're up, 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 I think. Uh, but that being said, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna eat some food. We're gonna get in there. We're gonna play probably another 90 minutes-ish or so. We're gonna call this a uh, night. After the brief break to do a second mid-session update, we colored up our chips, caught a second wind, and began preparing to put in a few more hours. Then, Okay. The source of the alarm signal that you have heard is being investigated. You will be notified when the source of the alarm is 
is identified. Thank you. Some strange Bellagio alarm started sounding. It was annoying and loud as hell. This went on for quite a while, and at some point, I just mentally checked out. I did manage to play one more hand with our new friend, though. I open from the low jack with ace four of hearts, and he raises to $90 out of the big blind. Most of the time, I'm just folding here, but I like playing pots with this guy. Although, he continued getting the best of me every time I did. I call the $90, and he checks the flop. Dark. Check. I also check on the eight of spades, deuce of diamonds, six of spades flop. Then he checks dark again. The turn brings the king of diamonds, and I decide that this card, this is a good one to stab at, especially since I was the original opener from the low jack. I bet $60, and he calls purposely exposes one card, which is a king, and checks dark again. <laughs> what? Ugh. Yeah. The river five of hearts is a big nothing, and there's no way this guy is folding to anything I do. I just muck my hand. This guy had my number, and I couldn't beat him. I hate you. I hate you so much. Yes, the session is um, over, but I think um, I think we're gonna stop giving wrap-ups here in the parking garage. It's probably not the safest, so I'll see you soon. So we have made it, we have arrived, we are back at home. This uh, living room area is probably a much safer place to tell you that I was in the Bellagio uh, 510 game for 1600 and out for almost 29, I think like 2874 or something like that. Um, I don't know why I have historically said these dollar figures in a public domain where I can just be you know, stabbed and taken for my little monies. But I think I will start uh, either talking about the figures here at home or coming up with some cutesy little animation to do the same thing. Uh, the game itself was not the greatest for the first four hours or so. Uh, the last two hours, table dynamic changed a bit. The game got a lot better. Uh, and then we won some pots. So with that, I am going to take probably 20, 30 minutes, upload that footage to my machine, upload the footage that you're seeing right now to my machine, and then put it on the back burner because we still have like, I don't know, like two or three vlogs to edit before we even get to this footage. So you probably won't see this for a month, but that's how we do. So to wrap this up, if you uh, like the vlogs, like the vlogs, uh, leave me a comment. I will probably respond. Probably. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Whenever that is. I'll be around. I'm not going anywhere. Y'all want to see all the outtakes, fun facts, and behind the scenes craziness? Well, here we go. With pocket queens versus uh, six, seven suited, a bluff turned into a home where we cannot get mugged or robbed or shot or. Uh... So here we are. Um, back in the safety of our home. I am going to upload that video, I don't know, two or three vlogs to get to, because they always change. And um, first I changed it, changed it? It's not a word. 
I just I just hate people, man. Like this guy, like I look like the type. I'm the quintessential fucking red guy, and you don't think that I'm gonna fucking straddle? Dude, I'll play fucking 10, 20, 40, 100. I'm sitting in this fucking game to get away from these fucking mooks at Aria. Sitting with you at a 15 cap, and you think I won't fucking straddle? You fucking cunt. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Thank you. No, you be calm. I was gonna say, we haven't played at the same table in a while, but that's a lie. It's been a hot minute. We are here, mid session update, have special guest, Rain Delay, in tow on fire. On fire today, he is. Damn near three in the morning, and the session went. You know what? Honestly, it could have gone better.